dear viewers, oil after some processing is one of the most valuable natural resource and it is known as black gold. There was a time when it was thought that oil is the blood life of industrialized and developed countries. But during the present era, oil is the blood life, not only the developed countries, but the developing countries at the same time. Oil has become the world most important source of energy since mid 1950s. Its products underpin modern society, mainly supplying energy to power sector, heat homes and provide fuel for vehicles and aeroplanes to carry goods and people all over the world. The world dependence on oil is increasing as global economies and infrastructure continue to rely heavily on petroleum based product. The oil industry continue to while incredible influence in international economics and politics, especially in consideration of employment level in this sector. Like we have the best example here, the US oil and gas industry supporting at least 10 million jobs. Okay, with the help of some other Middle Eastern countries and North African countries, Saudi Arabia is ruling the oil and gas industry since many years. After a few years back, Russia has started to challenge the supremacy of Arabian oil and things are starting bad for the OPEC after the separation of Qatar. But Saudi Arabia managed it well by incorporating a new term OPEC plus including Russia, US, some other oil producing countries. But things will become more worse when in November 2019, US announced its self-sufficiency and exports of oil. US become the world largest producer of crude oil after Saudi Arabia and Russia and become the second largest exporter of refined oil products after Russia. Previously, US was totally dependent on Arabian oil. So technically, it is a big shock for Saudi Arabia too. Things become more worse for the OPEC when few days back, Russia split from OPEC plus. But Saudi Arabia, um, uh, one of the biggest exporter and producer of uh, crude oil uh, has the girls to give the uh, uh, give the lesson to the Russia. Okay, under this situation and due to the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic situation, demand and supply could not match with each other and things become more worse while for the oil producing and oil exporting countries. In the beginning of April 2020, OPEC and its alliance agree to historic production cut to stabilize prices and they agree to drop their production to 20 years lowest level but it's but it was too late for the US oil market and reached to minus 14 per, per barrel okay dear viewers here i am dr amjad ali for the detail discussion on this uh, particular issues uh, i have with uh, with the company of uh, dr mark audi uh, he is a very uh, well known uh, educationist as well as researcher in lebanon he is uh, economic specialized and consultant uh, he has the PhD in international economics and uh, financial studies. Question, the reason behind US oil price negativity, oil price bounce back, US crude oil future trade above zero. What is the causes of the WTI historical decrease in the prices of oil? Okay, uh, 
the, the, the thing to be to, to clarify at first is that the main problem uh, do, when we hear about negative prices in uh, oil, many people think that it's the overall oil uh, uh, per barrel that decreases. We need to differentiate between the brand that is the Middle Eastern uh, oil barrel and the American one that is the WTI, the Western Texas Index. The Western Texas Index is um, is the American oil uh, that is uh, that comes. Two, basically, the main target of it is the American um, market. And for that, um, it's really different than what we see in the, um, in the Middle East uh, with the, all the other countries like Saudi Arabia uh, and even um, UAE, et cetera, et cetera. The main problem that came is related to the coronavirus when uh, people decreased their, um, um, their demand over the overall oil consumption, and especially China. So uh, there was a small um, conflict between uh, KSA and Russian that escalated very quickly because of the loss of, of demand. So therefore, uh, we have an overall supply, an increase in supply worldwide of uh, the oil, and the process start, started to, to crush. Saudi Arabia came and asked, um, Russia to decrease the, its uh, production, so its supply, and Russia refused. Therefore, uh, as a response, Saudi Arabia started to uh, to supply uh, in response just to as a vendetta, started to 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 increase its supply as much as possible. And this uh, decreased to a historical low for the first time. The WTI uh, prices of um, of uh, the U.S. because of this overall supply dropped below zero. It is important to to state uh, one thing: uh, the problem started uh, clearly uh, at the beginning of uh, 2020, especially when uh, uh, Russia decided to leave. Uh, the OPEC agreement, yeah. and uh, to punish her, that's what happened, the increase in the production. Uh, after that, what we saw is that people, um, all the supply and the storage of uh, the oil could not be sold anymore, and uh, the U.S. could not stop its production at all, because stopping the production technically is, is uh, like a suicide for the oil drilling, because the pressure is natural, and when you want to stop basically um, uh, any uh, any um, uh, any oil, uh, let's say, uh, drilling uh, part, you're going to lose this natural pressure and therefore you cannot gain it anymore. It's very difficult to gain it back. Therefore, you need to produce at a minimum, but even the minimum that has been produced was very difficult to be sold. Noting that uh, the WTI is sold through a special regime that is a forward regime for the future. It's a future regime, like every 15 of the month, you are going to uh, sell the requested for the next month. For example, in April, you're going to get uh, the demand for May, and in May, 15th of May, you're going to get the demand for June. And the demand was posed uh, for uh, May, but unfortunately, they could not store this demand anymore. So while the tankers were on the sea, people started asking themselves, the buyers started asking themselves, what am I going to do with the, all this bar of oil? I cannot store them anymore. So, and the US and the producer could not get those tankers to stay in the water because it costs a lot of money. Uh, mm. And they cannot go to um, uh, even to any port and ask them to just get the tankers there because you need to go uh, to, 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 to those marinas and just uh, get out the oil uh, 24, 48 hours. You can park there, but then you have to lose. So a lot of money is in the game here. So people started wanted to just go out of their positions that uh, when they bought uh, on the market those WTI in the future market and started uh, selling and the selling uh, also some of the people buy it to store it other people buy it to speculate and the speculators started to be afraid and sold as well as much as possible uh, those um, uh, their positions and this created basically a situation where for the first time the old WTI so Western Texas index decreased to a negative reaching minus 40 so this okay. is a historical 
degrees. Yeah, today is minus 40. Yeah, uh, no, today is not minus 40. Uh, at, in April 20, it was minus 40. Today, it bounced back. It bounced back to around $16. If I look at my panel here, it's 16.94 today. It bounced back, but pay attention that this is the prices for June, not May. May decreased to minus 40, but in June, it's different. Every future is different. Now, it yeah. all depends on the coronavirus and the overall usage that is going to have uh, for the uh, for the oil overall, especially in China, because of the loss in production that we have. People are not using their cars anymore. Uh, the US um, that's, uh, uh, air, uh, airliners are not uh, flying anymore, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All this create this negative supply. So the shortage in supply, excess in demand, decreasing the price to uh, this those negative, uh, uh, let's say, record and negative. Uh, peak that we have uh, that we look this created the panic but we can talk about that later on uh, this created the panic overall in the u.s market and even in the overall uh, okay is there any settlement working among u.s russia and arab after or during this uh, uh, covid 19 situation related to the oil price yes as i said before uh, everything started when and uh, the Saudi Arabians tried to find a settlement with uh, Russia over this COVID-19 shortage in uh, demand, and Russia refused. And it escalated very quickly. Uh, Russia decided to leave the OPEC and to punish them. As I said, KSA tried to increase or to uh, overflow the supply uh, of, the, um, of oil in the uh, in the world knowing that it creates a big uh, problem because to the russians because uh, the russians cannot withstand such low prices uh, to note that the cost of production of one barrel in russia is 19 dollars uh, whereas in the us is 36 dollars if you go to saudi arabia it is 2.8 dollars 2.8 dollars nice. yeah that's great yeah. so it's cheaper than uh, pepsi and uh, coca-cola so yeah. that's great that's a great thing so imagine yeah. that a barrel of oil only costs saudi arabia 2.8 so they can have the luxury to increase this production and to punish uh, russia get them out you got out of opec that's great we are going to get you out of the game entirely yeah. you see so that yeah. was the reaction of the, uh, the, uh, the Saudi Arabian. But this escalated because uh, even in the gas industry, uh, Russia is number one in the world. So they yeah. can do the same thing for the gas industry. Yeah. So the Americans do not want that. So Trump, President Trump, requested from uh, its allies, the Saudi Arabian, and Putin to sit down and to find a settlement. Uh, and uh, started declaring that the settlement will be done in April 14. A settlement has been reached to decrease the overall production. The overall production has been decreased by 9.6 or 9.7 million barrel uh, per uh, per day, which uh, is supposed to control the overall supply in the world and decreased uh, or to control at least the prices such as uh, to 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 get what we have today that between at 19 and 21 dollar getting back uh, russia in the game and controlling and get them back in the opec and show how opec is strong how much opec is strong when you go out we can punish you so do not do that knowing that russia was a very bad student of opec because they even wanted to sell uh, yeah. the oil in a different currency than the us dollar and we know that the americans do not like that because the us dollar is uh, is annexed to the buyer we know that we, we know the petrol dollar that has been decided in 73 with king faisal's um, agreement after the Bretton Woods agreement and uh, since then we have the product uh, the, the the printing of the US dollar or the value of the US dollar is always annexed to the uh, to the oil uh, production to oil barrel mm. so uh, that's it okay uh, what do you think about the economic gains and losses for the producer and the exporter of as well as importer of the oil uh, yeah, uh, 
uh, some people say uh, say that what happened between Russia and uh, Saudi Arabia is all but plot to uh, to shut down some of the Americans, uh, 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 let's say players in the U.S. Uh, in the in the world uh, in oil field etc. But it, it is true that the biggest loser here are the USA because uh, they are the one that um, that are the weakest link because of the prices, the high price. As I said, it costs uh, $36 to produce one barrel in the United States, so they cannot withstand those prices anymore. And uh, the printing of the US dollar and the value of the US dollar is next to the uh, overall uh, oil prices per barrel since 73. So a loss, let's say, uh, of such magnitude of uh, the value of the U.S. Uh, of the U.S. oil WTI and the brand overall, uh, the OPEC Plus. So prices, the, uh, the basket of the OPEC Plus that today uh, goes around 15.23 dollars. It's a huge loss for them. They are out of the game. They cannot. If they stop their production, they are going to lose the oil pressure for a very big time. And we do not know if they can go up again. What will happen here is that. Uh, the U.S. is going to suffer a lot uh, in terms of uh, the, U, uh, the, the, the U.S. dollar value, uh, the, but they can bounce back. Of course, the stock market will suffer, and I, I will start to see uh, a decrease in the, in the worldwide uh, stock, uh, stock market. Uh, the revenues for the Russians are going to decrease for the Iranians as well. Uh, Venezuela, with the price uh, that goes uh, around between 10 to 12 dollar per barrel without counting the 33 percent royalties that they need to pay to the government we will have a big change even in the in the venezuelan uh, uh, political aspect because of the president cannot withstand anymore um, and we know that we have they have conflict uh, in the country they cannot withstand the regime without having money and they cannot have uh, enough money uh, with those prices decreasing like that. So uh, a lot of, of countries are going to suffer uh, a lot economically. We, pr uh, we forecast a decrease in the US dollar, uh, as well as um, in, an increase uh, later on in the demand of product because of the increase in the European purchasing power because the euro is going to go up and they are going to be able to uh, increase their purchasing power. But is it going to please uh, the, the Chinese? That's another question, you see? Yeah. Because uh, that even though the US uh, is one of the main markets uh, for the, the, the big demand of, for China, uh, still, it is one of the most fierce competitors of the Chinese. So that's the dilemma that we're going to, to, to live here and to see. So um, no questions asked. We're going to have a big uh, recession uh, and the devaluation of the U.S. dollar. Uh, we have an evaluation of the, uh, of the Europeans, which uh, will decrease their exportations and therefore their GDP without counting the catastrophic events that happening with the COVID-19. Saudi Arabia's re revenues are uh, going to go down a lot. We know that uh, Russia um, uh, pre forecasted gain in, uh, in their revenues, but now they're forecasting losses. Saudi Arabia uh, as well. Uh, uh, the Emirates, U.S. Emirates and Kuwait uh, su are suffering a lot, especially Dubai uh, and uh, Abu Dhabi, that is the main producer of the United uh, Arab Emirates, uh, suffering a lot from uh, those revenues and they need to cheer up the, 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 the princess Dubai. We call them the yeah. princes of the of, <laughs> of the countries. Princess Dubai cannot withstand anymore because of the COVID-19 and 2020 exposition is really uh, a flop. And therefore, um, I, I think the the future is not very bright at uh, right now because of this decrease in the oil production. Because uh, Dubai is mainly uh, uh, depend upon tourism as well at the same time. Exactly. So tourism is also banned in these days. 
Yes, it's going down. It's dependent on tourism. It's dependent on um, some uh, high tech expo. Uh, so the main, the main, the main uh, uh, savior of the United Arab Emirates are Abu Dhabi because they are the the richest Emirates that uh, that they have. But now they are going to suffer, of course, because of the loss or decrease in revenues uh, that we are going to see in the future. Yes. Okay, what is the politics behind uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, Russia mainly in the oil price war? Uh, the main po the main problem that triggered it uh, is, as as we said, the coronavirus pandemic basically um, was the trigger of it because of the loss of this big demand that we have. So the Russia Saudi Arabia oil price war of 2020 is an economy uh, is economic war triggered in uh, March 2020 by Saudi Arabia in response to Russia's refusal to reduce the oil production in order to keep the prices for oil moderate at a moderate level since its consumption fell dramatically due to the 2019-2020 uh, corona pandemic. Russia then left the OPEC plus and everything started from there. All right. Okay, uh, uh, what are the impacts for the Saudi Arabia and Russia and, and the other stock market uh, during this and after uh, this uh, pandemic situation? Yes, uh, so the main impact uh, on, so let's start with Saudi Arabia. Uh, we discussed it a little bit uh, before, we're going to go into detail. Saudi Aramco, we know that the producers in Saudi Arabia, it's called Aramco, uh, announced a cut in capital expenditure from 35 to 40 billion dollar plant to 25 to 30 billion dollar plant. The government also increased its debt ceiling from 30 to 50 percent of the GDP due to both the oil and the impact of the pandemic that we have and plan to cut its spending by around let's say five percent as its budget deficit was expected to increase from six to nine percent. As for uh, Russia, uh, the Russian government, as I said before, had initially forecasted that it would uh, run a surplus of nine, uh, 930 billion uh, rubles, uh, roughly $11.4 billion in 2020. But following the outbreak that we found of the prices, it is expected to run at a deficit. The ruble dropped, having fallen over 30% between the start of 2020 and uh, what is the policy for the developing nations because in this uh, scenario the oil price very low and reachable for the developing country like pakistan and like uh, other developing countries so what is the policy yeah. for them to uh, get the more benefit of uh, uh, during this situation well, it depends. Many of the, the uh, developing countries are uh, next to the U.S. dollars or uh, um, are dependent on the U.S. dollar to be able to import or uh, to even to export their uh, their uh, their production. So uh, what's going to happen now? They are going to profit from um, a cheaper, let's say, U.S. dollar uh, overall uh, in the world. If we want to talk about exportation, importation, economically speaking, yeah. they are going to profit from that. Uh, because they will have an increase in the purchasing power, they will see their currency going up uh, as well. So uh, the overall purchasing power of those countries will increase a little bit, but at the same time, they will suffer uh, from another part that is uh, that even though uh, they are profiting from uh, the purchasing power of their importation, they cannot yes. export anymore because they become uh, too expensive, you see. So they yeah. will have uh, in the trade uh, balance, they will have a small uh, uh, or an increase in the deficit. Uh, that's why we, 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 when we talk about uh, the situation or what is, what's happening right now, we are talking about the worldwide uh, crash, you see, worldwide yeah. crisis that's going to, ha to, to, uh, to reach everyone. And even the developing countries uh, such as Venezuela that are producers of, um, or major producers yeah. of uh, petroleum, they are going to suffer as well because the demand in petroleum is so low that all the income that, uh, that comes from it are, is going to, to, be, to be dropped, cheered down. Yeah. And yeah. that will create a main uh, gap in their revenues, and that's a big problem. Okay, uh, you tell us that uh, in coming days, uh, the dollar will be depreciated. 
So can you predict the, how much uh, depreciation we will see uh, for the dollar? I, I don't know how much exactly, but I know that uh, there will have, we will have a depreciation, a steel depreciation that started uh, with an appreciation of the of the euro that uh, that gained over the dollar, and that's a good thing. Uh, the depreciation is also increased by another fact that uh, in the United uh, States we have uh, a main problem because of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, all the main uh, companies stopped working and to, to be able to help them, uh, the US uh, government had to borrow an additional a trillion dollar, uh, arising the external debt of the United States to four trillion dollars, so four thousand billion dollars. And that's a very bad, um, mm. let's say, situation for the foreign economy like that. So that uh, make people a little bit afraid what they are going to do now. I think they're going to increase the uh, interest rate for monetary policy, trying to, uh, let's say, control the, the overall increase in prices and the inflation that comes from it. We will see the full impact of everything that's happening after the COVID-19 pandemic, as everything today is uh, just still. That's why it's very difficult to predict what's going to happen to the US dollar, how much is going to go down, how much the, the euro is going to go up, the yen, the yuan, etc. And it depends also on how well the Chinese are going to recover as well, because China is going to wake up to uh, a weak uh, US dollar and they do not like a weak US dollar. Uh, they like their uh, currency to be the weakest because uh, as we know, China's economy is uh, majorly dependent on production, uh, investment and exp exportation and not consumption. But uh, I, uh, I found that uh, there are some scholars as, uh, in developing countries as well as, as, well as in, in developed countries are talking about that after the, this pandemic situation of COVID-19, we will see another superpower. So can you predict that the China will be a new superpower without fighting uh, any missile, any single missile? As I said, as I said, uh, uh, war, if you want to, uh, to, to, to talk economically, the third revolution, yeah. the third um, world economic revolution was the ICT. So uh, the information communication technologies and the fourth was robotics. So therefore we are more and more dependent on all the, those technologies and even wars are uh, dependent on technologies and economy. Uh, as we know that we always hear um, a correlation between the COVID-19 and the 5G. And we know that uh, the, they have tensions between the USA and uh, China concerning the 5G technology. And this 5G technology basically is a game changer when it comes to the economy as a whole, because it changes everything how we operate. Uh, it all depends on, uh, and China is the leader in that. So uh, it, it all depends on how well China is going to recover from the COVID-19, because if China recovers well from the COVID-19, and uh, we have enough demand that is going to come from the world, therefore China is going to be able to get the, to the first position and, beco and become uh, the superior of the US. Uh, especially that US, as I said before, is suffering a lot from the COVID and from oil as a revenue uh, and, uh, and a lot of uh, loss in purchasing power. So again, is uh, China want to really want to uh, destroy the American economy? I don't think so. I don't yeah. think so. Yeah. Because uh, China, uh, the American economy is the main recipient of Chinese products. So if they destroy, yeah. they are going to destroy themselves. That's why they are the main buyers of the, uh, the external U.S. Uh, debt. And uh, uh, that, that's a clear sign that uh, they need each other. But I think they need to sit down and... Uh, and get down a little bit from their uh, arrogance, but uh, and uh, and start to 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 compromise, and that's what's going to happen, I think. That's Otherwise, the things will be delayed for both of them. So that's why they have to settle down as soon as possible. 
Exactly, exactly, exactly. The two superpowers that we see, the Chinese from one side and the American from the other side, in between we have Russia, Iran, and we have uh, the, uh, the Europeans as well, and the Middle Eastern countries on the other side that are going to, to, to bump each other just uh, as proxy wars and all that. Uh, at the end of the day, everything that's happening right now, I think, is just to... Uh, wrestle a little bit uh, in order to sit down to the best situation and get the best out of all this. But I, they are both interconnected and both depends one uh, on the other and they need each other. Uh, uh, and as much U.S. needs China as China is used in needing the U.S. That's my opinion. Okay, at the last, uh, uh, I want to know that uh, there are some researchers as well as some uh, um, uh, activists on the social media, they are talking about that this uh, COVID-19 is a biological weapon. So can you give us some comments on this issue? A lot of, uh, of cinematic yeah. scenarios, rumors yeah. and cinematic scenarios and plots and all that. We saw a lot of uh, of that uh, recently, uh, we know that it started. Uh, some of the scenarios say that China did this uh, out of um, just to get out uh, and control the American firms that are uh, in in China because they ca they cannot withstand them anymore. So they created this COVID nineteen, uh, mm -hmm. spread the COVID nineteen in order to. Uh, uh, draw down uh, the situation in the in China, decreasing the stock market in China, and buying back. So uh, by buying back all those uh, firms in order to control them and not being controlled in their uh, own soil by the Americans, and then uh, just declaring that everything is okay, we controlled everything, uh, and now uh, you are going to suffer from the COVID-19. We have the answer uh, in our country. Everything is okay. We heard some rumors that COVID-19 is uh, nearly in inexistent now. Uh, it has been controlled in China, uh, at least uh, in the main part of China, whereas yeah. all the whole world is suffering from it. So as if China wa wa was ready for, for that, China knew that something like that happened. So that's why some of the scenarios came by saying it's a plot. It is something that has been uh, done to change the face of the world. This is smart. This is Machiavellic. This is this. So we really don't know because we're not uh, in, the, in the mind of those superpowers, but we can just look at things and uh, see from, for, for ourselves. China is doing well right now compared yeah. to COVID-19. Economically, not so far, but they both, they both as uh, it is, has been said, uh, a lot of the stock market, the American stock market, and now control the main part of the American firms. So yeah. that's a big question mark as well. It's very smart from them to have been to, to do that, to have been done that at least. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. It's very player and very informative uh, discussion for uh, two days. And uh, I hope uh, in coming days, we will join this, up, this type of discussion with more uh, social and economic issues uh, for the developing as well as in on the developed countries at the same time. With great pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.